I'm David LaRoche. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts, and my major is history with a focus in secondary education. Everyone's like a family here, so everyone's looking out for everyone else, and everyone's in your corner, and it's pretty nice seeing everyone wanting to see you succeed.
is a part of any mixture of green cleaners. It's a natural element. Do you mind know what that element is? It's called water. Okay. Naturally, water is one of the best cleaning elements known to man. It's always been used to clean whatever. And it's not just a modern occurrence, it's been going on for thousands of years. Uh, and, and I'm sure you understand the chemical makeup of water, which allows it to be such a significant cleaner in nature. Okay. Now, the state of Vermont puts out other information about what should or should, should not be in a cleaner. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going to kind of just go down the list that I've highlighted here, and some of them I don't understand. I don't even know what to talk about. Maybe you do. I'm sure you can deliver it up and figure out what these things are. The first one on the list, uh, it says mandatory exclusions for all cleaning products used by the state employee contractors within state facilities are as follows. No persistent bioaccumulative intoxic chemicals. Okay, so anything that is a toxic material, you cannot use in a cleaner. What's a toxic material? Something hurts you. Cyanide. Cyanide, that's a good one. That's pretty toxic. How about acid? Is that acid good for you? Nope, you're not going to put acid in the cleaning material. Can you find in some cleaning materials acids? Yes, you can, but not in schools. Okay. Uh, there are some very strong acids, especially when you're cleaning bathroom tiles and uh, you know lime on the walls and things like that. It does a great job, but it <clears throat> creates an environment, it creates smells, it has the potential to hurt you. If somebody accidentally ingested uh, acids, it's not good for you, okay? If you're going to the hospital, or something's going to happen to you to uh, help dilute the acid. The next one on the list, and you would think that this would be pretty straightforward, carcinogens. We cannot have carcinogens <coughs> in a green cleaner. Okay, what's the best known carcinogen in the world? Cigarettes? Smoke? Okay, anything that causes cancer. Okay, and that's pretty rational and logical. But there are a lot of carcinogens out there that, uh, I mean, there's a lot. And a lot of them are man-made carcinogens, and they do a lot of functional things that really we need. But what they're basically saying, we may need them in certain environments, certain places, but you can't put them in a cleaner and put them in a school or a public building, okay? Next on the list, <coughs> no ozone depleting compact. I don't know exactly why that was on the list. Uh, anybody have an idea of an example of ozone depleting compounds? Aerosol. Some aerosols, yeah. That's being cut back way. What, what is an aerosol? It's not the aerosol concept, it's the. What's the propellant, propellant in the aerosol? Uh, forget the name of it. Chlorofluorocarbon? Yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't know what that has to do with cleaners necessarily, but obviously uh, we're not concerned about depleting the ozone in the high school for the cleaner, I don't believe. But I think just generally, conceptually, for the good of the world, nothing that depletes ozone. It's depletion of ozones in the long run, not very good for the Next one on the list. Any material that has a hazardous waste characteristic. Okay, hazardous waste. Uh, I'll give you one that kind of comes to mind. Is back when you used to have uh, film 
and you develop pictures on pieces of paper. A lot of you probably uh, may have not seen this happen. If you go to the drugstore and you see the pictures of that machine, there's some developing process, there's chemicals they used to do that. They used to have tons of chemicals in jars and everything they used. Well, those kinds of chemicals are hazardous waste. You can't just pour them down the drain. Another is oil. You can't just pour oil down the drain. Fuel. Fuel, you can't just pour down the drain. Now, a good example of a hazardous waste, would you, uh, you know, I, I know people who have used this for cleaners, is like gasoline, kerosene, car remover, things like that. Those are hazardous materials. Those do damage to you and to the environment. You can't do them in the cleaner. So, kerosene is a wonder drug. I don't know if you all knew that. The kerosene, it's a big time disinfectant. Okay? When I was little, when you got a cut, your mother stuck your hand in a bowl of kerosene. And you soaked it in kerosene. It burned, but I'll tell you, it never got infected. Okay? No phosphate, no phosphate products. Uh, Again, to me, I'm not for sure I understand completely why no phosphate. Because usually when you think of phosphates, they're in relationship to water quality. They are the things that we dump on our yards and they run into creeks and run into Lake Champlain and they, call, they cause water bites to die because of growths and algae and all this stuff. They're natural nutrients this kind of stuff. Why you can't use it in a cleaner? I'm not sure, other than they don't want to increase the phosphate content of the surrounding water and stuff. I'm not for sure what phosphates do to you personally. Person. Yeah. I was just going to ask, like, so, like, like, like when you put the pH level of something, No, phosphates okay. are actually uh, polysomic ion that are attached oh, okay. to another a metal, usually, like calcium phosphate. It has nothing to do with it. Phosphates, matter of fact, uh, I grew up with phosphates on a farm. That's your fertilizers. Anytime you plant seed or anything, you put phosphates down and that. The last one on the list of the things you can't have in there is no combination <coughs> of cleaner and disinfectants. And when they wrote this law in Vermont, uh, I, I think I may understand, but not completely, why when they wrote the law, none of this stuff applies to disinfectants. Okay? Disinfectants are not affected by the cleaning laws. Okay? But at the same time, you can't combine the two. You can't put a disinfectant in a cleaner or vice versa. One of the common things when you read the literature on green cleaners is they use a term that is exposure to volatile organic compounds. And for short, that's VOCs. Volatile organic compounds. Uh, now I'm going to talk, based on that, there's a lot of characteristics of green cleaners that come out of that concept. What VOCs are? Do you, do you know what organic compounds are? Just in the general sense? Carbon. A carbon molecule complex or something. But it's, a lot of these uh, carbon molecules, organic carbon molecules, they, uh, if not, you start to evaporate pretty readily, okay? And what that means is, is you can smell it. They produce a smell of some sort. A number of years ago, for quite a while, 
the smell that you smell when somebody painted a room and you can smell the paint, those are VOCs. Those are VOCs. You're smelling the air. Some people react to those VOCs and it doesn't make you feel good. Okay. There's a physical reaction to VOCs. Uh, another VOC that's really common throughout the world and even in the United States is formaldehyde. You know what formaldehyde is used for a lot? <coughs> Preserving like stuff to be like dissected. What's that? Preserving things to be dissected. That kind of deal. Yeah. It's very good at protecting things from insects. And with one example um, of where they use a lot of formaldehyde is in furniture manufacturing. Plastics, things like that, especially in office furniture. You can get a ton of formaldehyde, which is a VOC, high VOC content material, and it, it can make you sick. Uh, I'm not going to tell a lot of stories today, but I had an office one place that we created, and we put all brand new furniture in, and we had about in the office probably something like 80, 90 employees. And within one week, everybody was getting stuck. I mean, everybody. And also, you find formaldehyde in a lot of carpeting too, certain kinds of carpeting and forward material. Everybody's getting sick. Called in the health department, did some testing, they did air testing, and the air was just full of formaldehyde. And we literally, for two weeks, had to open the building up and evacuate it, and we let it air out. Eventually, we got rid of the smell. But it really has a health impact on you. And what they're basically saying is they don't want VOCs and cleaning products because people can react. Is anybody here allergic to bee stings? You, you can really be allergic to bee stings. One bee bites you and you got problems. You better be a teen injector. Some people, I mean, I've seen people just almost pass out immediately from the bee sting, just fall over. <coughs> Some people can get bit 20 times by a bee. It has no effect on them at all. None. Maybe they get a bump, maybe they get a mark. They go on like that even happen. Another example is poison ivy. Who here catches poison ivy very easily? Yeah, there's with a hundred feet. Yeah, there, I mean, some people really catch it very easily. I, I honestly believe I can hold poison out of my hand and rub it around, and the only place I get poison ivy is on the inside of my little fingers. I don't know why, but it's just, I don't react to poison ivy. It's the same thing with these kind of products, these chemicals. Most people don't react to these things, but some people really have a reaction to these chemicals, to these products. And that's why they basically said, look, we're going to have cleaning products, we're going to meet these standards, and that's it. You don't bring anything else into a school. Okay. A perfect example. One of the common characteristics of these cleaning products, green cleaning products, is they have minimal smell. Okay? You can't. You know the concept, you walk in and somebody's cleaning the bathroom or whatever, and it's, it smells clean. Right? Well, in this, if it smells clean, it's probably not good. Because what you're smelling is the chemicals, for the most part. Okay. No smell or very low smells is what they're at with the green cleaning products. Okay. Perfect example, you wash your windows with Windex. Can you smell that Windex? Yeah. You can. It smells clean, doesn't it? That's part of it. You put some ammonia. You're smelling ammonia, mostly. And some fragrance they put into it. Can you bring Windex, quote unquote, into a school now? No, ammonia's not allowed. Ammonia is part of the banned substance. Okay. It's 
there's all kinds of cleaners like that. Uh, Mr. Clean, all these things, they smell clean. No, that's not good. Don't want it anymore. I've had people tell me that, you know, wax floors now, where it's, uh, in the summers with green waxes, it's not just cleaning products, it's green waxes too. But it doesn't smell like it used to smell. So we obviously didn't wax the floors. Well, we did, you just can't smell it, so it smells like we didn't wax floors. All this stuff applies to our school buses and everything else. But, you know, it's not just in the school, it's anywhere you guys go. School buses, whatever. Now I brought a list and, uh, of things that they, the state says are approved cleaning products used in schools. You got <coughs> all-purpose general cleaners, you got carpet cleaners, cooking appliance cleaners, floor cleaners, floor polish, floor stripper, hand soaks, restroom cleaners, all different kinds. What the state has basically said, there's three types of certification, okay? And if a cleaning product is approved under these three certifications, then it's a green cleaning product and they can sell it to the school and I can buy it. If it's not been certified by one of these three different certification agencies, I can't bring it into a school. Okay? Now, I don't know everything that's in these products, but whoever does that certification, now I'm not even going to tell you the names of the certification, but you can find it in a lot of different publications. It's Green Seal and two others. They test it and they say, yeah, it's clean or it's green. But what I do have to have, and I understand we haven't gotten quite this yet, every chemical, cleaning product or anything else is brought into a school has a thing called an MSDS sheet. Well, that MSDS stands for the Material Safety Data Sheet. And under that, it lists, I've highlighted on this one, this all the stuff that goes into that cleaning mixture. Okay? And I'm not even going to read everything to you because I can't pronounce some of it, pronounce some of it. But it has surfactant in it. I don't know what that is. As a matter of fact, it's a trade secret. They won't even tell me what it is. So it is sodium carbonate. Anybody know what sodium carbonate is? Sodium Soda. It's a pretty kind of soda, but it's pretty common with your dad's in a lot of these cleaners. And then you you got other things that I'm not even gonna try to explain or uh, talk about. But that is for a general purpose cleaner. You'll notice when you look at all these two, almost almost every one of these products is a concentrate. Okay? You come, you buy them in a concentrated solution, and you add water. Okay? That's almost a standard across the board. Why do you do that? It's less impact on the environment. Smaller containers, easier to transport, so forth and so on. It's easier to use in terms of mixing and all this other stuff. So they are all concentrates. This MSDS sheet is for a glass cleaner concentrate. And in here, it does has isopropyl alcohol, but again, there's no ammonia in this. You're not gonna find ammonia in the glass cleaners. This one is a neutral cleaner concentrate. And I am not for sure what makes that different from a general cleaner, but it's neutral. And then the last one I brought was a disinfectant cleaner. Again, a disinfectant's got to be separate from a cleaner, a cleaning product. Okay. Now, what these MSDS sheets will do, can you just take a green cleaning product and drink it? Is it bad for you? 
Can you take green cleaning product and just take it and rub it in your eyes? These things still have a health impact. But the health impact, if you took Windex and rubbed it into your eyes, I'll guarantee you, you wish you had it up. Okay. This stuff still, it's not toxic, but it's, it's still chemicals, okay? But the biggest thing it does, it does not emit those VOCs. That's one of the biggest things that it's not doing. Okay, I may have given you more information than you want from me. Uh, I have actually, uh, I, I have in this school district 26 custodians. And I have one custodian that's quote unquote my head custodian. And I make him go to these classes and I make him tell me which ones I should buy. Okay? Because he uses them. He, he knows what he's doing. I don't clean your schools, okay? They do. They know what, which products are better, which ones are not. There's a lot of belief, you know, here a lot of times that what are another common characteristic of green products is they cost more and they work less than a regular <coughs> cleaner. I don't know, okay? I can't answer that. But I do know that those are the only things you can use in schools these days. That's it. Nothing else. Any questions? Was this exciting enough about green clean products? No. Are you really serious? There's no questions? My class? Really? Or mine? Okay. What so about your class? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect your class. Okay. Hold it out. Hold it out. Got, got questions. It's not so much that it has to have something to be approved, it can't have any of those six things, okay? One thing that it has to have is low DOC, okay? It has to be a concentrate, okay? Uh, you, you don't buy it already mixed, okay? It's got to be a concentrate. Uh, <coughs> I think of the smoke things, but those are two of the top of my ear. Does anyone spend the power of green cleaners now since then? I'll tell you in another year or two. My experience is this. I, you, what the, one of the big ones that impact us here in schools, in my opinion, is green floor stripper and green wax, okay? Uh, and I'll tell you why. Number one, I know I pay more for human volume for the green stuff than I did the other stuff. The opinion, most of my custodians is, is that the green stuff doesn't hold up as well as the regular stuff. Uh, even to the point, and I do it for other reasons, also, is I believe over time what we ought to be doing anyway is getting away from waxing floors. Okay? We ought to be not trying out different flooring materials to see what works. But I, I think it's a waste of money waxing floors personally. Uh, there's safety issues, there's all kinds of problems. In general, I can't prove that green products are more expensive. I, I can't. Yes. When you said that, it No, I, because there's a difference between, I don't know what you're saying, acidic versus acids, okay? Yes, materials can be acidic, okay? Green, clean products can be acidic, because, see, you know, I think you understand what I'm saying. You don't have to have some non-acidic cleaner, you can have acidic cleaner. But you can't use acids. I mean, you can use any type of a acid. Can't use like um, hydrogen chloride as yeah. your acid, or your sodium hydroxide as your base. But you can have an acidic pH to your. Cleaner. 
So, you know, vinegar, for example. Desmond, we're going to ask about what you were trying to search for today, aren't you, Desmond? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. How much money does the school spend on experiencing the school Was that it? Didn't you want to know how much they use a year and how much they probably spend so you know how to do your cost analysis? I'll provide that information to your teachers. And I'll just tell you right now, uh, you know, I have a budget that I have to follow every year. Uh, and it, but the budget includes, I also handle busing. I have all building maintenance. I have grounds maintenance. I have everything. And if you look at the lines in my budget, the most costly single line I have in my budget is custodial supplies. I spend more on custodial supplies every year than I do on fuel for school buses, if you can believe that. But we're talking I spend probably about $130,000 a year on custodial supplies. Mr. Rice, I think what we're trying to help them understand is if they wanted to sell to you, what would be an approximate, it doesn't even need to be that close, but an idea about how many maybe gallons you buy or of a, of a type, any type, just so they get a feel for what, if they had to make this product, how much would they need to make? And I will give you that Thank you, I would appreciate that. I would easily give you that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're saying that. Anything else? So we just out. So basically, that one hundred thirty thousand dollars is what we're talking about here. Is for five buildings. We have fourteen buildings okay. in the school district. Oh, that's right. Six at uh, Allen Street. Allen Street. Uh, I mean, you well, we got Stafford alone. You have three buildings in Stafford. Okay. That's just under ten thousand dollars a building, but you might now quickly. Okay, anything else? Good luck.